low touch screen and it's got that killer always on. This is actually going to be a first for uh, notebooks and netbooks is that yeah. you can actually close it and it won't just be in standby, it will be on, it will be connected to the internet, it will be pulling down your Twitter feeds, it will be able, you'll be able to call someone on Skype yeah. on their netbook when it's in their bag, it will be on and connected. And I think once people actually experience that usage model, when they go back to a normal netbook, it's going to be very, very noticeable when you turn it, when you have to go through that turn on process. Absolutely. Even if it's only five seconds, it's actually, Absolutely. it's a bit of a barrier. You know, and, but we also should never underestimate the brand equity of, of uh, Hewlett Packard. Right? It's still the number one uh, PC manufacturer in the world. They have huge distribution channels. So if a company can kick off smart books, I think uh, Unit Packard is one of these companies. And uh, we've, we've seen the one from Lenovo, the Skylight during CS. Uh, I'm not sure if this will be a success. At $499, it's not going to sell at all. Well, I'm going to buy one if they come into the market, but I might be the only one. <laughs> um, Monty, we were talking earlier about uh, another device that sits in the category between 4 and 10 inch, inch devices. That's ebook readers. And you picked up something on the Qualcomm ebook reader earlier. Uh, do you yeah, want to tell right. us about that? Yeah. So talking about all these netbooks and, and, and new devices coming out, it's really a matter actually about um, consumer behavior and there's a change and we're at, at a really at a tipping point where people are looking at these devices as, as from a usage um, viewpoint. So basically even if you're, if you're talking about all these um, uh, specs and, and, and uh, new cameras inside or whatever, it's, it's really a hardware business at the moment, and we are at the point to turning, uh, like combining hardware with software, like creating new business models for these devices, and it's more about talking about the cloud than, or cloud computing, or what, how can you make money, uh, like saving your files somewhere else and not on the devices anymore, just having a, like a powerful network to serve the, the web. And one um, specific, very interesting product uh, are the e-readers, of course. And Qualcomm did a, a presented a prototype, uh, which is um, a small e-reader device comparable to the uh, Nuke or to the Amazon Kindle, but uh, with a um, color display. And it's very right. fascinating to see the quality of colors, um, moving pictures, even video is possible and they will uh, present one is of Is this an ambient light readable display or is this a standard LCD display? No, it's a, like a, a special uh, ambient uh, reader That's device. That's a mirror soul display. So yeah, okay, which is the, really the competitor to the, to the Pixel Chi That's screen That's a competitor technology. to the Pixel Chi, yeah. yeah. So this actually it's pretty interesting. When you, it is. We're getting at a point in the technology lifeline now where we're actually able to create such uh, cheap devices that we can target them at individual use cases. And what we're actually doing is creating individual use case um, uh, point of sale devices for selling content and services behind them. And an yeah. ebook reader is, is exactly it, that case. It is, and it's really not about technology anymore. Technology, it's getting better and better. It's really about new business opportunities and new business models. Within the Mocom 2020 vision project, we uh, estimated that probably in 2016 or 17, there will be e-book readers or e-paper devices uh, for free or almost for free. Like you can you can have a subscription for the New York Times and just pay a dollar for such a, an e-paper device, which serves you uh, without color or even with color. And um, it's not a matter about the technology; it's really about what you serve, what, what benefits. You know, Added, added value you can provide. Yeah, and uh, it's it's also with the with the netbooks. It's really a, a way to get into the cloud and to probably create completely new business areas. So it's really a disruptive innovation area. Yeah, it is. Um, I saw the Wired demo, uh, which everybody talks about right now uh, on, on Monday, and it was really like built with um, with Adobe Air. It was really, really beautiful. So, you know, like, like I'm not a gadget guy at all. Like, I promised Steve that I will not talk about gadgets. And now, and, and now I I'm, and I'm talking about it. But for me, like, as a self-confessed late adopter, I really loved, the, I really loved what, what, what I was seeing there, like the, the experience. Like, I could never do that with a magazine. And I think that's the big question. So you see, I think this, it, this conference is about so many this niche devices 
asking for consumers to buy them. And the question is, will they, when will they buy them? Will they buy them with experience? It's much better from, compared to the stuff they've seen so far. And I think we see some early devices right now which actually nail it. Yeah, and I think and you're right. And devices and not, not named Apple. And, that, and that's because <laughs> the technology has matured to a point now where we're able to create these devices quickly and cheaply for individual use cases. Let's, uh, let's move a little bit away from uh, software and let's bring it back to, to Intel here. We want to quickly talk about Mego and then we'll go into talking about the developer community, developer community as a whole and this gold rush, not for developers coming to app stores, but for app stores trying to grab developers. We'll talk about that in a minute. A so let's point. just quickly uh, talk about uh, Mego, which is the the merge of Moblin and MIMO operating system stacks from Intel and Nokia into one uh, stack which theoretically we could put across a whole range of Nokia and Intel devices from smartphones all the way up to netbooks to create quite an interesting model for developers to think about when you think about the, the hundreds of millions of potential devices out there and if we're getting to the point where we've got low cost individual use, use case uh, devices and we can go all the way down to things like you know, fridge screens, fridges with, 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 with internet access and all that sort of stuff. Um, then we can talk about hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of devices with potentially one operating system, just a few injection points for developers. And that's a pretty interesting model. And I think that's really what Migo is for me. Let's quickly go around here to see, uh, see what you guys think about, uh, do you want to have a quick chat about Migo and what, it, what you think it means uh, to you? Yeah, sure. Um, I think you, what, what, what we've seen in the last two, three years, you have all these different form factors, like the fridge. And what people don't know is like they, m most of them run basically on Linux. And I think what happens with Migo right now is and all the, the app up on top of it, you know, like the, you, you get a lot of developer opportunities to create more value and around all these form factors, which we haven't done, done before. And I think this is really, really exciting. And as this year, we will have all these Linux devices we know, like in-car entertainment, set-top boxes, fridges, whatever. You know, all these all these devices will get apps on top of them, and I think this is pretty pretty exciting. Uh, I, I can only agree with Matthias. I think uh, even though it, it created already some buzz on the web uh, on Monday, it was for a couple of hours number one uh, Twitter uh, keyword, yeah. and. Uh, Lots of articles through all, all not only the tech media, but the media in general. But still, like what we said yesterday, I'm pretty sure it takes us some days and weeks to really realize what impact um, this corporation will have. Um, for for Nokia, it's opening the world. Well, it's opening their Nokia world to um, a huge record of our hardware development. A, a, a huge base of uh, architectures uh, where they can really, really uh, uh, participate on. And for um, for Intel, it's opening one of the biggest distribution channels in the world, which is Nokia, because you can buy Nokia in every little store, right? Every little telco store, there's at least one Nokia device. So um, this partnership is just huge. And like you said before, um, it's all about we're starting at a device that maybe has a, a two-inch display, and we're ending up maybe with TV sets with 80-inch. Yeah. Right. Um, so that, that's a huge, a huge product portfolio that both these companies can create together. And um, there's nothing like this uh, on the market so far. Yeah. Hubert. So, as, from a developer's perspective, I think that uh, there's a few points that are important. Um, first of all, when it comes to OSs, less is more. Um, Secondly, developers care about the install base. So it doesn't matter how hard it is to develop on the platform, what matters is how many people you can reach. And, and the final thing that I'd like to talk about is uh, platform fragmentation, uh, hardware fragmentation, because it seems like a, a great idea to be, to be able to code on uh, multiple devices that are very different with the same OS. But at the same time, the reality is that one application will work really well on one platform and not as well on another one. So um, a little fragmentation is good, too much is uh, actually counterproductive. Right, Monty. Yeah, I, I think um, what it also shows is that um, Nokia and, and Intel are like getting their most um, advantages together to form something bigger. 
especially if you look into Asian market where Sasha knows it pretty good as well, Nokia is not playing as such a big role. Yep. And uh, I think they are really trying to like keep track about the speed of development, also what you see at Huawei, um, what they are introducing here, as well as uh, HTC and, and, and competitors of Nokia, of course. Um, so they're really driving the business very fast. And uh, yeah, that's uh, probably an opportunity now to, to keep track. But that's actually a very good point that you just mentioned. Uh, when we talk, take a, a look at the Asian market, uh, Android has a huge momentum down there. It's an open system. Um, uh, the developers in Asia are really embracing it. Uh, when we're looking at the Chinese market, we have about seven, 720 million mobile phones in China. And uh, China was just opening the market for 3G January last year. So uh, this market is going to be huge. If Nokia has a chance, and when I'm also taking a look at uh, future platforms that are coming from Intel, for example, Moorstown, right? a combination getting some smartphones or handhelds with Ms. Moorstown and with 3G connectivity uh, to the Asian market with an open operating system, because that's what it's all about in Asia. They really embrace open source and they really embrace open technologies. And uh, with Migo, uh, they can deliver this. And this will be very appealing to lots of developers over there, and this uh, can make a can make a turnaround for uh, for Nokia on these markets. Yeah, Matthias. Um, let me quarrel with Hubert here. Um, I don't think it's all about install base. I, I mean, like there is Symbian, you know, and if you do like gaming stuff, it takes nine months, a lot of money, a lot of development time. So, it, and they all, these guys always argue with their install base, but it's not that much relevant. And I think with this one, you know, like when, when we talked to some of the developers who, who did mobile, you know, two weeks, easy, you know, and they loved it. And, and some of them actually liked it way more than, uh, than Android, because it was like, I think, I remember a quote, this is a real desktop type Linux, first time ever for a mobile internet device. And these guys love it. Um, we'll, we know this is maybe one just few for first quotes. Um, we'll see how, how, what, what kind of traction these guys will get into the market, and, and, but I think it's certainly very exciting. 